Hey everyone, it's Byron here again to testify for Jesus Christ. I'm going to cover something I feel is, is very important for us to completely understand, and that is worship, uh, as one would say, worship in spirit and in truth. And it comes, uh, the saying actually comes from a verse of scriptures, Philippians chapter 3, verse 3. And Paul says, For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. And just real briefly, the last phrase, no confidence in the flesh, just means I don't have any confidence in myself. Paul states, as right here, we, the circumcision, those who worship in spirit and truth and rejoice in Christ Jesus, we have no confidence in our own fleshly abilities. Although we have many different things that we could boast about, but we've put that behind us and we have confidence in the Lord and what the Lord can do in us and through us and for us. Anyway, that's just to get that kind of neatly packed out of the way. But he said we worship God in, in the spirit and rejoice in Jesus Christ. And I, I just want to talk about worship. And I think Sometimes we confuse when something occurs. And I want to just use an example of spontaneous worship all the way back in Genesis. When uh, Abraham sent his servant out to find a daughter, I mean a, a girl, uh, for his son Isaac. And he went off and found Rebekah. But at the time that he found her, he prayed to God that she would come out to the well and do certain things a specific way. And when she had done that, after that was over with, Genesis 24, 26, he says, And the man bowed his head and worshipped the Lord. Now, the scene is such, it's outside the city, it's by a well, like the kind of like the story where Jesus talked about the, the woman by the well. We talked with her. But it says he bowed his head and worshiped right there. The thing that occurred right there in that moment in time was so magnificent to that particular man. He stopped. He didn't have to have a praise and worship leader. He didn't have to have a scheduled time to say this is specifically when I'm going to worship. The events occurred in such a way that he was in awe of God and worshiped. And that happens to many people. Um, and it happens to me. If you ever see me cry in a video, um, be, be, be aware that when I feel in awe of God or I feel the Holy Spirit in a certain way, I just come to tears. Um, and I'm not unique. I've seen other people do this too. My son does it and we, we just start to cry. And it's a form of worship in my opinion. It's, an, it's a bodily response to something going on that is beyond the norm, and it, I call it worship. When we're just in awe of the point that has just occurred. Now, I did a Google search, and I just want to um, run a video here real quick and talk to it. And the, the video is of a, a Google search, and I just searched worship crying. And I'm going to um, just talk to that a little bit. This is merely of a, a Google search for worship and crying. It says, church is a perfect place to cry. And then it's got some statements there. Tears are a normal response to worship. Going on down, emotional, the gift of the spirit. Down under there, it talks about, I would always cry during worship music. Um, I cry during praise and worship. When worship becomes dangerous, but anyway, it says, I cannot help but crying in his presence is manifest when his presence is manifested to me. That's exactly what uh, I'm speaking of. I would have cried. I don't know if that necessarily says anything. Um, why real worship should move you to tears. He said, there's, there's a lot of stuff out there, including some other related searches there. And I just wanted to share that real quick so that we would understand that um, sometimes when a person cries they're not in distress and they're not 
hurting. They're in awe. The video that preceded this one, um, the video title, I'm sorry, uh, Actors Hide, Actor Hides Christians from Captors. That particular video I cried in. And I cried because of the awe that I feel almost every time I get to Romans chapter 6, 7, and 8. And when I, when I completely feel what God has done for me and for others, that there is, there is life and liberty in Romans 6, 7, and 8. And those that the revelation hasn't quite totally gone off yet, uh, one day it perhaps will, and you will realize the richness of what actually occurred there. Um, so I just wanted to do this short video just to explain that uh, tears and crying uh, are not always distress signals. They are sometimes um, worship signals and joy signals and signals in which if you if you pay attention with certain people when they occur you know beyond a shadow of a doubt okay God's moving this you know and that's how I felt during that video uh, I've seen people on uh, I've seen Jimmy Swagger do it my son does it my son he told me the other day he watched one of my videos and it was actually about sin and when I talked about Romans 6 7 and 8 specifically Romans 7 and 8 um, my son said, Dad, I cried four times, three or four times during the video. And that happens to me. It happens to him. It took him about three years to understand what I was trying to explain to him in those chapters. Um, and then when the light went off, he was just like, oh, yes, that's it. Um, so I don't want to just share that. Um, sometimes you'll, you'll see me do that. And that is, in my opinion, a point in which sometimes I am in awe of God and it's just one of those places like it, the Abraham servant just had to bow down and worship the Lord because of the, the stuff that was happening that's the way I feel it's like I, I just I don't necessarily always pause sometimes I talk through tears but it's because I feel like just praising God sometimes for what occurs not always but most times so thank you